All right, welcome to class. Uh, pull out your um, Chromebooks. Everybody pull out your Chromebooks. I'm going to give you a second. Pull out your Chromebooks. The sub's going to write a website on the board. What I would like you to go to is desmos.com slash calculator. So desmos.com slash calculator. So when you get to this website, you should look something like this. So go to desmos.com slash calculator. All right, so today we're going to do some graph manipulation. And we're really going to hammer these points home of the, the equations that we have um, gone through so far and really see visually what happens when you kind of move things around in the formulas. So first thing I want you to do is type in y equals negative 2x plus 5, or sorry, minus 5. So you should have a, your computer screen. Make sure that it looks like mine. So I'm going to give you a second to verify that your line crosses the y-axis at negative 5. And you have a negative slope of negative 2 over 1. All right, next, I want you to type in y is equal to negative 2x plus 5. So what happened to the graph? What's the difference between the red line and the blue line? The difference between the red line and the blue line. So there, notice their slopes are the same. So the negative 2x is the same. The thing that changed was the y value, where it crossed the y-intercept. So... Watch what happens as I change this and I go down. So I'm going to change it from positive 5 to 4, and then 3, and then 2, and then 1, and then 0, and then negative 1, and then negative 2, and then negative 3, and then negative 4. Notice I'm, I'm taking that same line I'm just dropping it each time on the y-intercept. Now, these are called parallel lines, if you remember from geometry. Parallel lines have the same slope. So if you have the same slope, they're parallel lines. All right. So what I would like you to do now is go ahead and delete both of these if you hit the X. So you should start out with a clean graph that looks like this. So remember, parallel lines have the same slope. So next I want you to do is y is equal to 2 thirds x. So you could put um, 2 thirds x. Uh, plus 3. And that is given in the wrong order. 2 thirds. X. Okay, there we go. So make sure your X goes to the side. I hit uh, the arrow over. Uh, plus 3. All right, so if you hit enter, you'll get a chance to put a second line in. What I'd like you to do is y is equal to negative 3 halves, arrow over, so that it's in the middle, x plus 5. Now, 
what I want you to notice with this is these are called perpendicular lines. These are two lines where they cross each other at a 90 degree angle. And I want you to look at the slopes. The slopes here, you have two thirds and negative three halves. Those are called opposite reciprocals. So from algebra one should re review parallel lines have the same slope. Perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. All right, so now that you had a chance to kind of model along with me, make sure your graph looks like this. You need to practice entering equations in. If your X went in the denominator, you have to hit the arrow over to get it where the X is in the next to it. All right, so go ahead and X out these. And what I would like you to do is put in 2X minus 3y equal to 12 and I would like you to do y is equal to 2 thirds x uh, minus 4 All right, so here's my question. Where's my second line? I have two separate equations here. I should have two lines like I had in the past. Anybody notice? Well, here, I'll change this value and see if you notice anything that happens. Oh, what happened? What happened? moving my line up so if i go back to negative four it still appears but it's laying over top the other one what does that mean that means it's the same line so this right here the second one is the equation written in point slope form this top equation is that same exact line written in standard form remember we talked about that Standard form is when X and Y are on the same side as the equation. And then everybody remembers this from algebra as the slope intercept form. All right. So what I would like you to do is on your graph, go ahead and X these out. Y is equal to one half X plus three and what I would like you to do is find two more equations one find write an equation where there's a parallel line to that but not the same line so you can't just rewrite the equation find another line that's parallel and then find another line that's perpendicular so you get to write it you get to type in the equation and you get to check to see, is it actually parallel? Is it actually perpendicular? So I'm going to give you some time. Go ahead and do that now.
All right. So I'm going to choose, I'm going to go y is equal to, if it's parallel, I know that it's going to have the same slope. So I'm going to leave it as one half x. And I'm going to do minus four. That's the one I chose to do. The green line is parallel to the blue line. And then perpendicular, I know that they have opposite reciprocals of each other. So that's going to be a negative 2x plus 1. Oh, it should be plus 1, not equals 1. Okay, so hopefully you don't have the heebie-jeebies, but these are two parallel lines cut by a transversal. Two parallel lines cut by transversal. That transversal just happens to be the perpendicular line. So the purple is perpendicular to both the blue and the green. Now remember from geometry, you can prove that if this is 90 degrees, then alternate interior angles are congruent. So you can go this is 90 degrees, this is 90 degrees, therefore this is 90 degrees. So you could prove that through geometry as well, okay? But we know from algebra mathematically that, that opposite reciprocals are perpendicular lines. All right, so here's what I am challenging you to do is I want you to mess around with this graph. You get to choose any one you want, but just start putting in values where X is squared. And how you do that is the caret symbol, which is on six. So you should have X. And then if you hit shift six, you're going to get a caret, which will allow you to put in an exponent arrow over and then you can do plus one. So what I want you to do is this is a parabola. I want you to change this value, the one value in a different graph. And I want you to change what's in front of X and see what happens to the graph. So go ahead and take some time to play around with that.
All right, well, welcome back. I am going to model this for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a 2 in front of the X. So what happens to that? What's happening as I'm putting the 2? It's getting skinnier, right? Kind of opposite of what you think. If you're adding a number, you would think it would get wider, but it actually gets skinnier. That's because those values increase twice as quick. So it actually brings that in. And then we will we'll do plus one. It moved it up. What about plus two? Moved it up even further. What about plus three? Moved it up even further. What about minus five? Oh, it dropped it way down. So you can kind of mess around with these graphs and see how it actually manipulates the answer. So I'm going to do y is equal to... I'm going to do a fraction, one half, one half, uh, x squared, so x caret with the six, plus one. Notice that brings the graph and, and stretches it out. So from the red graph to the blue graph, the only thing I did was add a fraction to it. So what happens if I make that fraction smaller? One third, one fourth, one fifth, one sixth, one seventh, one eighth. Notice it is changing. It's making it wider. As that fraction gets smaller, it's, it's basically grabbing that parabola like the handlebars and stretching it out. All right. What happens if we put a carrot on the y and put y squared? Oh, what just happened? What just happened there? Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, we got two of them. How'd that happen? What happens? What happens if you change some numbers? Change the value of one, put change the value of one for the y, change the value of y, one for the x, and change the value of one in the, um, the coefficient here, and see what happens to the graph. Just take a few minutes and, and play around with it.
All right, welcome back. Well, I'm going to do that y squared is equal to x squared plus 1. And I'm going to I'm going to change the value. So what happens if I move that to plus 2? Oh, it brought it up. What about plus 3? Plus 4, plus 5, plus 6, plus 7. Noticing it's taking the starting points and moving them away from each other even further. All right, let's go back to one. What happens if I just change the coefficient in front of x? Oh, it, it stretched out the x value. Three. It's making it more steep, right? As the number gets bigger, those two are getting closer together at the top and bottom. So it's like you're grabbing the handlebars and pulling them in instead of pulling them out. Okay, let's go back to one. What happens if you put change it in front of the Y? Oh, no. Started stretching it out. When we change in front of the X... Notice where the starting point is. Did it move? No. But what about the Y? Did that one move? Oh man, it's moving the uh, off. The, the two starting points are starting to differ. What is going on here? So the starting point changed. And then it's also stretching it out. Kind of interesting, huh? Why does this happen? These are things we're going to learn this year. All right, here's another challenge for you. Switch the equal sign and the plus. Leave this y squared equals x squared plus 1, but replace this with the plus and replace this with an equal sign. What happened? Oh, you got a circle, huh? Interesting. All right. What I want you to do now is change the value of 1. See what it does to the circle. Change the value in front of X and Y and see what happens to the circles. Going to take some time doing that.
All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed your lesson today. Go ahead and uh, start packing up. Um, I hope you have a great day. I will be back in class tomorrow and we will see you and I will talk about uh, all the lessons. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Um, if there's some time left in class, go ahead and you can take out your phones, check your text, but do not congregate by the door. I hope you have a great day.